Either you're gonna love this video or you're not because we're gonna break down several current trends in motion graphics that I have found and we're gonna put them all together in this one video. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I hope everyone is having an excellent day today. Now, this is a really fun tutorial because like I said, either you're gonna love it or you're not. But what I want you to take away from this tutorial is the individual techniques and how you can implement them separately or even all combined together. These are several trends that I've seen this year and I'm gonna break them down in this tutorial. And if you don't like this tutorial, just keep the video rolling in the background because you know it helps the YouTube algorithm and the rankings. So you can at least listen to my annoying voice anyway if you don't wanna watch this tutorial. But let's jump in, let's get started. And as always, if you want to follow along with our tutorial and break it down, you can download our project files for free off our website. The link will be in the description. So let's start off this tutorial and let's talk about a couple of background techniques, a couple of animated background techniques. So I want to focus on creating these smaller dots in here, including this wiggled circle. Really easy to do this. What we'll do is come here to the top and we'll grab the ellipse tool. And you know, click on the word fill, make sure it's set to none, click OK, and click on the word stroke, set it to solid color, and click OK. And we'll hold down shift on our keyboard and we'll draw a small circle like this, okay? And we'll come here to the line tab and we'll center this up. All right, and one thing you'll notice, you'll have a circle here. And we'll come here to add and we're going to add a repeater. And we'll open up repeater one, go to transform repeater one, set the X position to zero. And where it says scale, we'll go ahead and increase this, all right? So you got some offset there. And of course, let's go ahead and increase the number of copies to fill up the entire composition. And we got to go to anchor point and we just have to move this over to where this is going to be like all directly in the center of our composition, just like that. And that's cool. You can always lower the scale if you want to have more in there or increase it. So that's really cool. It's coming in from the center there uh, completely up to you how you want to roll with that. And let's come here to add and let's also add a wiggle paths. So now you're going to get a really interesting look here and we'll come back to transform repeater one and where it says start opacity let's set this down to zero percent so now you have this interesting animated background uh, that is wiggled from the center all the way outward and that's cool let's talk about one other uh, animated background technique which is just going to be a series of dots going across so we'll go ahead and hide this and we'll go and grab our ellipse tool again this time we'll click on the word fill set the solid color click ok click on the word stroke and we'll set the none and all we're going to do here is draw out a perfect circle, pull down shift, it can be right there, that's fine. Then let's come here to add and let's add a repeater again. Open up repeater one, increase the number of copies, it'll go all the way across and that's fine. You can open up trans uh, transform repeater one and you can always increase the distance or decrease it. Uh, it doesn't really matter. And we'll close this up, click on contents and we'll add another repeater. And we'll open up repeater two go into the transform set the x position down to zero and set the y position up to like a hundred all right and then you increase the number of copies go down and now you have uh you know a series of circles going across here and that's nice and you can open up lips one you go to lips path one and you can always decrease or increase the size depending on what you want to do that's nice and small i like it so obviously we want to animate this so let's go to effect distort and let's grab wave warp and here we can set like the wave height up to like 140 and we're going to really start distorting this and we can come here to the wave width set this up to like almost 400 and we can set our wave speed up to two where it says pinning we can set this to all edges and we can set our anti-aliasing to high so now you'll have another set of animation here with our dots and let's actually set our wave speed to like 0.2 so now you have a really cool animated dot in here uh, for your background. You can put these two together and overall you'll be able to put together uh, a pretty cool scene, you know, pretty cool. All right, so now let's talk about these seamless title techniques uh, and it's really easy to do this. So what we can do is grab our main title here, we'll duplicate it and we'll come here to the character window and there's this little swap icon here. You can click on that uh, and it'll take, it'll take your fill and turn it into a stroke. You can adjust the stroke width right here where it says stroke width and what we're going to do here is we're going to take this layer and we're going to duplicate it again just turn it off and we'll pre-compose the new layer layer pre-compose and we'll just call this uh, title placeholder okay and what we'll do is go into this title placeholder we'll go to composition click on composition settings and where it says height let's go ahead and bring this down to like 
where we had just have a little bit of space around there you know maybe like a 300 height click ok go back into your main composition and we'll go to effect stylize and we're gonna grab motion tile it's right there and and we'll increase the output height and you get something like this and that's cool you go back into that composition and go back to your composition settings and readjust the height to something like this go back into your main comp you'll see that you get these nice little duplicates here and just increase the height to fill up the entire composition and what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to move this over to the sides i think this is a really cool thing that we can do and i'm going to add a keyframe for tile center and i'll move forward to the end of our animation i'll say five seconds and i can just take the y value here and animate it up and that's cool and then i can duplicate it and i can just move this over to the other side of our comp and instead of going up will go in completely in the other direction so then you just have the sides occupied here and we turn our you know main title on there in the center and now we have a really cool seamless title but I want to go ahead and fill up here but I want to have you know things animating here in the center and I really want to show you an awesome technique with the echo effect so I'll go ahead and take our duplicated title that we have there which is um, our stroke title and what we're going to do is we're going to hit P on keyboard for position. We'll add a keyframe for it and we'll move that keyframe forward in time. And we'll bring the Y value all the way to the top of our composition like this. So it'll just be animating downwards uh, like no big deal. And I'm going to click on this layer, go to effect time and I'm going to grab echo. And I increase the number of echoes here and I can offset the time a little bit. So then I can bring this layer over and we'll constantly have this layer coming down we'll turn our main title back on and you know you get a pretty interesting echo effect here and you can have it go on as far as long as you want if you, as long as you increase the number of echoes all right and i've been able to duplicate what we've done and brought it to the bottom you see that we have the title just sitting there so what you can always do is just bring those layers back forward and just have them uh, start like off the composition like this right and then you bring your layers forward in time and now those will always be coming down to your main title and that's nice now i want to wrap this up with maybe two more techniques where we're going to be able to blend all this together really well because right now you see that everything it's just so much to look at it's not great for your eyes uh there's no attention to really what to look at here and i want it to be obviously uh, you know, if we're talking about a title sequence, I want it to be focused in the center, of course. So we're going to do some really cool techniques here to put this all together. Before we move further into this tutorial, I want to give a shout out to our Motion Graphics Starter Pack. So right here we have our extension, which is our Motion Graphics Starter Pack, which this template has 500 templates within it that you can apply within a click of a button. You can preview uh, hundreds of titles, tons of motion graphics, and plenty more assets that we have in this pack. You click on apply and automatically applies it to any project you're working on. But we have something called Accent Motion Graphics. And what, simply what these are, are graphics that you can help to enhance your composition. So I click apply on an asset that I want. I can then take this asset and duplicate it around our composition. And I can take and change the color. And as you can see, you can take one object and help spruce it up really quick just out of our pack of 500 elements. And of course we have another dedicated pack called the 200 Accent Motion Graphics Pack, uh, which is just specifically for these accent graphics. So if you're looking to save a tremendous amount of time while producing awesome work for your clients and portfolio, you can check out our packs. Those links will be below. And if you do pick up anything, you will be supporting our channel. So thank you very much. So go up to layer, new adjustment layer. And what we're gonna do is go to effect, perspective and we're gonna grab CC spotlight I've never used this effect in a tutorial before so this is a special moment all right and with this effect you're gonna get like a anchor point you can move it around your composition it's pretty interesting but we'll come here and decrease our height a little bit and I'll go across a little bit more you can come here to the cone angle you can bring that down and I also love the edge softness I'll bring that up to like 80% and uh, you see it's a lot more is you're able to blend this together a little bit better and you can just play that anchor point to kind of just emphasize what should be uh you know in the main focus now this is a really cool technique but i want to continue to just add some effects to this just to make it easier to focus on the center so we'll go to effect distort and we're gonna grab an effect called cc lens i love this effect look at that it just balls it together i highly suggest taking a look at what this can do 
but for us what we're going to do here is we can decrease the size so we can have it like start right here we'll come in here to begin for composition we can add a keyframe for size and we can move forward in time maybe for like a second and we can continue to decrease the size so what's going to happen here is you have kind of like this an animation that's focused on just distorting the sides and it balls together and then you know that is pretty awesome and you're going to have your composition run by for a few seconds or whatever how long you need it to be uh and then you hit your keyboard add a keyframe for size and then just kind of animate this out you know like have it ball back into it towards each other and bring on your next composition so a really cool technique so overall you're able to kind of just you know have an in and out animation that works with each other. You can have this looping. It's pretty cool. But I want to add one more thing, uh, one more technique, which is just going to create a slight, um, you know, RGB effect here. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. We'll grab all of our layers, go to layer, pre-compose, and I'll just call it all. And we'll go to effect channel, and we're going to grab the shift channels effect. And where it says green, set the full off, where it says blue, set the full off. We'll Take our layer here, go up to edit, duplicate, and set the red to full off, set the green to green, duplicate it again, set the green to full off, and take the blue to blue. And take the two top layers here and set the blend mode to screen. And let's go to our bottom layer here, or any layer if you want, hit P and keyboard for position, and we'll all click it. So then we can type in an expression, we'll type in wiggle, open parenthesis two comma three close parenthesis. So now, you're going to have a very slight RGB effect applied to it, which just helps bring a little bit more style to the overall, uh, you know, composition. You can increase the second number if you want it to be more intense. So I'll set it to six and you can see it a little bit more dominant in the scene. So those were several techniques that we went through in this tutorial. Hopefully you found them fun and interesting and able to use at least one or two of these techniques uh, throughout your motion graphic career or at least, you know, to finish off 2020. So if you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are below and always be creating.